and that has increased our confidence. In Tesla's stock basically says Kathy Wood and this was recorded right before Elon Musk did that version 12 full self driving beta live stream. I will go through all of today's Tesla stock news and I'll come back to Kathy Wood later because first you want to pay close attention to this one because Dylan is pretty conservative and he doesn't make big predictions but this is a bold prediction. Tesla is going to sell for autonomous robot taxis everywhere in the USA first and it's not even going to be close. No one is even playing the same game given all of the data out there I firmly believe respectfully having a different take is uneducated or biased. I mean, you would think that you are reading a tweet from Stephen Mark Ryan, but this is Dylan that we are talking about. Still a lot of hard work and training to do with ups and downs ahead, but with everything we just learned this weekend paired with what we already knew, the path is crystal clear now. Unless needs to enforce many uh, goofy rules like uh, you how to stop fully at every single stop sign, which I find pretty annoying because no one stops. And actually, when I immigrated from Europe to Canada, I stopped every single time in front of every single stop sign. And once I stopped fully at a stop sign and the person behind me did not expect me to stop fully and I got rear-ended. Where I'm from in Europe originally, you have to stop fully at every stop sign and usually they are only placed where you actually really need a proper full stop. For example, let's say there's potentially a train coming. Yeah, you want to stop fully and you want to pay attention if there's a train coming. I think that's justified. But over here in North America, these stop signs are everywhere, literally. That's just a stupid, silly rule to stop fully at every single uh, stop sign. If I had to guess, my updated take is we see a Tesla robot taxi in some capacity somewhere in the first quarter of 2025, if not sooner. Oh, and it's not just going to be some ultra cautious version, it's going to be smooth like only the best, most experienced drivers over time. Did anyone mention this technology will mostly transfer over to Optimus as well? Because it will, I agree with that. It will transfer to Optimus as well. Speaking of stop signs, James says, like I practically get offended when I'm driving behind someone and they do a full stop. I'm like, what's this guy's problem? And James, for the first time recently, uh, drove in a car on FSD, he said, during the FSD drive, I experienced the full stops were probably the most annoying thing. I think this is not going to be a problem in Europe at all for the most part, but in North America, the stop signs are just everywhere. In North America, even the police do not stop at stop signs. And this is very typical. This is what you usually see at stop signs. No one stops. I mean, these people are still going fairly fast in Europe. This would be very rare, at least where I'm from, this would just never happen. One of my friends actually had his license, driver's license, suspended because he did not fully stop at a stop sign in Europe. Hardware 4 software will lag Hardware 3 by at least another 6 months, said Elon earlier, and now uh, he was asked, is it really going to be 6 months? And Elon clarifies, yes, it's a real 6 months, maybe less. Part of me thinks this is going to be a lot more than six months because Elon says it's six months and Elon has not been great with his uh, timelines exactly. But another part of me thinks that this is just Elon trying to avoid Osborne effect for the new hardware for vehicles because now you are not as likely to want to wait until you get hardware 4 if you can get a vehicle that's hardware free and you need a vehicle right now. Gary Black responds to all of the people that are calling Gary out on his stake on FSD. He says, analytical rigor matters and a 45 minute live drive through overfitted Palo Alto doesn't change much since end-to-end -end net instead of hard coding doesn't prove FSD can drive by itself everywhere without intervention 99.99% .99 of the time. I believe it will in time, but it's obviously not there yet. Tesla Boomer Papa says, you're the one who's not there yet. Gary responds, I guess the entire market is wrong. Tesla was up 0.5% when Gary wrote that tweet. And now as I'm recording this, Tesla is down 0.5% for 9% while the markets are generally up a little bit. To me, this is an opportunity. The market just simply 
doesn't get it, which includes Wall Street and Gary Black as well. Personally, I like it because it allows me to keep buying Tesla stock at these cheaper prices, but the moment it will become absolutely obvious that Tesla has already solved for subscribing, the stock will skyrocket then. The debate between Herbert and Gary is getting a little bit heated. Gary says, I've been criticized by you and other Tesla Uber bulls for four years now on my view that Tesla will not be the only player who masters level four autonomy so far the uber bulls have been wrong you can continue to argue it's so hard to understand my view but i think the same of yours my response to that would be yahoo search will catch google any day now if you believe that then i think you will also believe that Tesla is not going to take the biggest full cell driving and robot taxi market share. Model 3 Highland was spotted being tested again in China. Tesla ranks number one in the JD Power 2023 US tech experience study. In fact, it ranked so high that they put Tesla at the very bottom here, even though Tesla got the highest score. Uh, maybe that's because Tesla is just a pure EV company and all of these other companies are not. Uh, Polestar is also grouped there together with Tesla. Alexandra has a pretty good point here. You heard Elon say Friday night that version 12 is happening all over the world. You may wonder where exactly. Put eight as a search word in Tesla's job offering page and see it. Here are 10 screenshots. Here's Japan. Here's Taipei. Here's Australia. I think this is Sweden. This is Norway. Italy, obviously. Spain. Germany. There's Madrid here. Then there's more. There's Netherlands as well. There's Quebec. So James Cat will like that one. There's Alberta. There's Vancouver. There's a lot of Quebec, lots of places in the US, so it's all over the world. Sawyer points out that this is the first time Tesla is using these new, more powerful H100 GPUs, and this is happening at the same time Tesla's own Dojo system is coming online. Some say that Tesla is not going to use its own Dojo computer really in a serious way because it's getting so many chips from NVIDIA, but Elon clarified here, we are going with both Dojo and NVIDIA. I think we will have the most inference silicon given that every car has an inference computer. My take on that is Tesla will take every chip that it can get its hands on basically. Black Tesla account says our first drive with FSD beta 11.4.7 left me speechless past every scenario in our regression path but the most amazing feat was zero steering nags. Got me feeling like Elon Musk on version 12. And Omar says no steering wheel nag will be a game changer for FSD user satisfaction. I fully agree with that. Of course, it's quite annoying. Uh, then you get nagged by FSD. Although once I figured out that I can just adjust the stereo volume, the music volume, and then that counts as uh, basically turning the steering wheel, it got a lot less annoying. Speaking about FSD version 12, a lot of these competitors in China are watching carefully what Tesla is doing and they will try to copy Tesla. Here's Elon's response to that. Some of them are indeed doing so we're well aware meaning copying tesla trying to understand what tesla is doing part of the value of having our own hardware is that our software will only run on that specific hardware warts and all as with apple you can't just copy the code or unpack the binaries you need their hardware too tesla just posted this on social media in china it says tesla china is very active in protecting the company's rights and interests and has a great attitude tesla has long been hit by many online rumor attacks and has won many lawsuits but it is difficult to recover from the loss caused by rumors for this reason tesla will use legal weapons to defend its legitimate rights even at enormous cost and time. I think that's especially important in China and I view that as a good move. Here are some pictures that show Tesla's progress in the construction of Tesla's lithium refinery in Texas. Here you can see what it is supposed to look like eventually. At first there doesn't seem to be much happening but you can see 
there's some digging there. But if you look closely, you can see some progress. Yep, there's definitely progress. Joe is doing great work bringing all of this content to us. Hyundai is developing 350 kilowatt EV chargers to challenge Tesla, and it wants to introduce these chargers later this year. My understanding is that this will be available specifically in South Korea. Tesla just released a new video in China called Camping is Fun, just showing a family on a camping trip basically having fun. And here's not just one semi loaded with Cybertrucks, but two semis fully loaded with Cybertrucks. Tasha from Ark Invest just posted this. I assume it's her picture, although I'm not sure. Uh, she says, and so it starts. I think the supercharging network is the gateway drug for other Tesla platforms, licensing autopilot and FSD next. And remember for every dollar of hardware, you know, eight to twenty-one dollars of software are going to be pulled through, according to our estimates. Uh, Tesla is the biggest AI opportunity out there. Uh, it is the biggest artificial intelligence project in the world when it comes to autonomous taxi platforms, and it is selling for uh, roughly, I, I think, it's seven times, maybe it's six times revenues now. Uh, so that's that's a, a very good example, and an even uh, uh, we think that's the best example. Or they have low gross margins now, like Tesla does in the twenties. These are gross uh, margins, but they will be rising because of this SaaS-like model that is evolving for Tesla. They will rise from the twenties into what we believe is the fifties and sixties. Uh, not at all expected out there. There's a lot of talk happening on Twitter slash X about how full set driving is not priced into Tesla stock at all. And if we are talking specifically about Wall Street, yeah, then I would agree with that statement. Here's how Wall Street looks at full cell driving. Uh, they look at, okay, the price of full cell driving is $15,000 and then there are $200 subscriptions and some people uh, take those, but the take rate is really low. So then what they do is they calculate, okay, how many uh, people will take these? And they don't assume that more people will actually uh, subscribe to full cell driving later, or that more people will be purchasing full cell driving later. Uh, they just base everything based on today's take rates. Then they project that seven years forwards. Then seven years of discounting is applied to whatever earnings uh, and price targets they come up with because money later is not as valuable as it is right now. And then they get the Tesla stock price target, which is not going to be really accurate because going forward, more and more people as FSD gets better will subscribe to full self driving and more and more people will purchase full self driving the moment they actually buy the car. Many retail Tesla stock investors realize this and ARK Invest also realizes this, but Wall Street, yeah, Wall Street ignores it. Um, one is valuation again, though. I mean, you can be right. Kathy was right. She's right. But, you know, the stock goes nowhere for two years versus the S&P, which is what's happened with Tesla. That kind of thinking presents a Tesla stock buying opportunity to me because Tesla stock is now selling at a discount basically compared to before. The fundamentals, I believe, are still very strong. It is up 1000% in the last five years. And year to date, it is up over 100%. I mean, okay, you can pick any point and come up with any math you want. I, I, I hear you. Also, I, I noticed that you said that market share probably is going to hold constant. It's just that the number of the EV sales are going to explode, which will drive their business. Either of those things sort of concern you or are you still as sanguine about this company as you've ever been? If anything, their competitive advantages are growing. You've noticed that GM and Ford have signed on to uh, uh, Tesla's charging station. They need that infrastructure. And that has increased our confidence, the fact that GM and Ford and others are signing on to this uh, charging platform tells us that these companies understand that the world is shifting from the internal combustion engine, which still is roughly 90% of auto sales out there, to electric vehicles. Well, Tesla does not have to transition. It is there. Uh, it, it has that DNA 
already. That's a good point from Kathy Wood. However, then I look at ARK Invest Research, and there's the one thing that I look at and I go, mm, I'm not so sure about that, and that is the EV adoption rate for 2027. They project an EV adoption rate of 60% or maybe they mean 65%. It's a little bit ambiguous how they put this all together, but it's at least 60%. But check this out. In 2017, ARC forecasted that global sales of EVs with 200 plus miles of range would approach 17 million. In 2022, a global pandemic, supply challenges, commodity price spikes, and the consumer preferences for longer ranges limited unit sales to 8 million. Still, four times the consensus estimates in 2017. In other words, ARC's forecast was off by 45%, but the consensus estimate was off by 400%. So ARC was a bit too bullish, but the consensus was way, way too bearish. So that's one reason why I think these numbers are also going to be a little bit too bullish, but probably not by an insane number. Uh, to some extent, these are somewhat reasonable if I think if that's your maybe bull case, but as a base case, I think that's a bit too optimistic is what I would say, because uh, the consumer preference for longer ranges, well, if you have a Tesla, try pretending that your battery is only 200 miles, which means you can't charge to 200 miles every single time, because unless you have LFP, um, then yeah, charge to 200 miles. But if you don't have LFP, then you can charge to 200 miles because that would assume you are using your whole battery. And it's not a lot of fun owning an EV that can only go 200 miles. So while the pandemic, I think, was extremely difficult to anticipate, the consumer preference for longer ranges, I think, was somewhat obvious. And then even more important from a valuation point of view, uh, we believe Tesla is the closest auto company and closest tech company to a, a fully commercialized national autonomous taxi platform. I know it sounds crazy, but if you are a Tesla driver and you have gotten the latest uh, FSD, so full self-driving update in the beta, uh, you will see a, a marked difference because of the breakthroughs in artificial intelligence that Tesla is using today in order to move towards full uh, self-driving. Here's Tesla's full self-driving software working pretty well in Los Angeles. This is one hour and it has zero takeovers. Certain places that used to give me problems no longer give me problems and I don't see really any major uh, regressions, at least where I drive. Overall, it's better with Almost every single update, I noticed something uh, significant. And now I can't wait for version 12 to be released to the public. Right. With with self-driving, question there, Kathy. Um, we all know that the number of deaths caused by human error is, you know, 100, 1,000 X versus driverless. And yet the driverless death is going to get all the headlines and freak people out. So when will Americans or globally people get over that and be able to sort of just be dispassionate about the numbers rather than robot killed person kind of yes. thing? Yes, uh, th there is a lot of emotion. You know, th there's a lot of behavioral science in terms of what right. goes in in the marketplace. Uh, and we went through this with Tesla. So uh, there are 45,000 uh, deaths uh, caused by auto accidents in the U.S. and somewhere between 1 and 1.25 million globally. 80 to 90 percent of those are caused by human error. Uh, so with Tesla, it was very interesting. Out of the 45,000 accidents that kill people, um, only Teslas seem to be featured as national news. Uh, and and there were very few of those, but every single one of them was publicized. And uh, it, it but truth wins out, and that's our philosophy. Do the research. If you're right, uh, then maybe the National Highway Transportation Safety Association will make the point that 
80 to 90% of human deaths in autos are caused by human error. Uh, and they have done that. In fact, uh, when they analyzed Tesla's first fatality, it was in Florida and it was a blindside by a truck. Uh, and they it took them six months, I think, to analyze it. But they basically came back and said, oh, it seems as though uh, given the safety features in a Tesla, Tesla's cars are are forty percent safer than uh, most other cars out there, and that was it became a selling point for Tesla for people who actually read these safety reports. So truth wins out. I generally agree with Kathy Wood on this point. There may be some pushback, and certainly there may be some delays in some places because of regulators. But I think it will be obvious to regulators that. Full cell driving is going to make cars safer. And I think it will be very obvious after looking at the data that that is the case. And once you have obvious data, I don't think you can really argue against that. You can maybe delay the inevitable, but I don't think you can just say no to it. I mean, you're basically killing a lot of people if you don't adopt the technology, if the technology can already save lives. You mentioned that Tesla's kind of a lightning rod. And, and to be perfectly frank, Kathy, I mean, some of that has to do with Elon. And, and that's a risk. I mean, are you concerned, one, about Elon's foray into Twitter, and two, his behavior generally? Um, and we've had to uh, face this issue since we bought Tesla, which was the day ARC opened its first funds in 2014. And, um, you know, back then and in 2015, I remember first talking about him when we had the opportunity to be in the media. And I said, you know, he's our Thomas Edison. He is, uh, uh, you know, our age's inventor. And inventors, if you study what they invented historically, if you go back to the Renaissance man, if you go back to um, uh, Copernicus, who's I put him down as one of my favorite inventors because uh, he um, he argued with Ptolemy about what was the center of the universe, the earth or the sun. And Copernicus said the sun and all the physics then matched what he was observing. Uh, he was an inventor of many things. I think Elon is that inventor today here in, in the world. And I have watched him surround himself by incredible professionals, very talented engineering uh, teams. Uh, and they work for him for, for less pay perhaps than they might get elsewhere because he is solving the world's hardest problems, including I would say Twitter, now X, you know, the controversy over censorship versus not, and just opening up the algorithms, letting everybody see how uh, how they're evolving Twitter into a, a, a healthier platform, the world's public square, public town square. So uh, he wants to solve the hardest problems in the world. And Thank God he does. Every single thing that Kathy Wood just said there, I agree with every single one of them 100%. Yeah, well, it ain't easy. Um, and and you don't necessarily succeed every time either. I think we'd all acknowledge that. It's a, it's a portfolio uh, business, right? Yes, and just to pick up on that, mm -hmm. uh, if you look at what Elon has done with SpaceX and rockets and, mm -hmm. and reusable rockets, so being able to land them on barges in the ocean simultaneously. That's amazing. But do you know how many times he had to fail to get that to work? And now we're in the artificial intelligence age. And that that is the that's the same is true uh, with everything AI. It'll be it'll get better and better over time, but it will be wrong in the beginning, uh, not until it perfects with more information. Uh, will it get it completely right? Speaking of things that Wall Street today did not get completely right, in fact, it got it completely wrong, is Tesla <laughs> stock. Tesla stock is not doing exactly great today. And you would think many people looked at that full self-driving video, version 12, 
on Friday and came to an obvious conclusion that this, of course, is going to help Tesla to solve full cell driving faster than everyone else. And over the weekend, we got this picture that showed us that Tesla is ramping up cyber truck production. We had 12 Cybertruck spotted at Giga Texas more than ever before, clearly indicating the ramp is going well so far. The markets have not closed yet today, but this is how Tesla stock investors, Wall Street, and everyone else is reacting. Tesla stock is slightly down currently. I know I said this many times before, but I just want to be on the record that in the long term, we will look back at this and we will think how come people did not think that this was a buying opportunity? It is stunning to watch how many investors just do not understand the scope of what just happened on Friday. Although Tesla stock now is trading slightly higher, so maybe they are starting to understand it. But the stock is barely moving. The stock could close at a lower price than where it opened. And YouTube says that you should watch this video next, but if you haven't finished watching this Elon Musk interview, watch this one first. My name is Matt Posius. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.